Good morning, or maybe it's afternoon by the time you're watching this. It's time for another children's sermon. Thanks so much for coming back. We're going to be reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible once again, and the story that I've picked for today is one called The Singer. That's right, one called The Singer. It's about a sermon, a story, a bunch of words that Jesus said a long time ago. And I picked it for today because at church at Bethany this week, we're talking about the idea of vocation. Vocation is this fancy word that means to call out. And it's about the ways that God calls us to live our life and about the different tasks and responsibilities God puts in our way um, to, to, for work, for life, for relationships, right? How God wants us to spend our life. And so I picked this story from the Jesus Storybook Bible, The Singer, because it tells, it's got some good advice from Jesus. Because it can often be a little difficult to figure out where God might be calling you. And we often might be scared or worried or afraid to the, about the ways that God is calling us. So let's listen to this story, The Singer. And then I got some tricks to show you after that too. See you in a second. The Singer. Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, and worried people. Lots of them. Worrying about lots of things. What if we don't have enough food or clothes or suppose we run out of money? What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below and little fishing boats coming in from the night's catch. The spring air was fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where do they get their food? Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up, cabinets full of food. Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag full of groceries? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and God feeds them. And what about these wild flowers? Everyone looked. All around them were flowers were growing. Anemones, daisies, pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendor. Not even a king is that well-dressed. They had never met a king, but as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples, and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They could not imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about these things, and God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made, everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything, and most of all, God's children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds and the flowers hadn't forgotten. They still knew their song. It was the song all of God's creation had sung to him from the beginning. It was the song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us. God loves us. God is very pleased with us. It was why Jesus had come into the world, to sing them that wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too. I got a yo-yo. I want to show you some yo-yo tricks. Thanks to Brian Jaster for letting me borrow this particular yo-yo. We're going to see if this works. You ready? Here we go. This is called putting the yo-yo to sleep. See, it stays down there sleeping, but then 
It comes right back up. Got it back up. All right, not bad. Let's try another one. Yeah, takes a second. This is called rocking the baby in the cradle. Not bad, huh? Looks pretty good. There we go. All right, let's do another one. Get it right. This one's called the trapeze. Boing. Who? And right back up. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? <laughs> oh, not bad. We've got the forward pass and around the world. Not bad, right? That always returns right to my hand. Hmm. Hey, welcome back. Did you like those tricks? Not bad. I know, right? I said that many times. Not bad. Not bad. I had to work pretty hard to learn that useless talent. But here's why I'm showing you yo-yo tricks. The way that a yo-yo trick works, a proper yo-yo trick, is that you throw the yo-yo down and then it comes right back up and it returns to your hand. Actually, what you need to know is it took me a long time to get this to work because the yo-yo that Brian lent me, for whatever reason, would not come back to my hand. I had to look on YouTube to figure out how to fix a yo-yo in order to make it work. Because after all, those wouldn't be very impressive yo-yo tricks if I just swung it around a whole bunch of times and the yo-yo never returned back to my hand. In our life, there's a lot of ups and downs. Just like a yo-yo goes down, comes back up in our life. There's good times and there's bad times, right? And, and, and it can be really difficult to make our way through that. We can worry about what we need to be doing. But the truth is, is that we are always in God's hand. Just like a yo-yo, even if we have our ups and our downs, no matter what, we always end up back in God's hands. The reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible spoke to that as well. We have lots of worries in life about where God might be asking us to go, what God wants us to do, if this is the right decision or not, what's going to happen. And Jesus reminds us in the story that we don't need to worry. God takes care of the birds. God takes care of the flowers. God will take care of you, too. The most common phrase in the whole Bible, this is a trivia question for you, the most common phrase in the whole Bible is, fear not. And I've heard it said that the word fear is actually an acronym that stands for forgetting everything about the Redeemer. Forgetting everything about the Redeemer. When we let fear take over and worry rule our life, it's often a sign that we've forgotten that we're in God's hands and that God's in control. Now, we want to put our faith into practice, so I have a good practice for you to try this week. I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to just write down some things that you might be worried about. School. Family. Sports. Friends. Whatever it is that might be worrying you. And you can be really specific, too. You don't just have to write one word. But talk with God as you write, and write down these things that are worrying you, and then I want you to take your piece of paper with your words written on it, and crumple it up. And then go to a trash paper basket and let your worries go. We need to remember to do this. We have to remember that God's in control and that we don't have a need to worry. Let's not forget everything about the Redeemer. Let's trust God and let our worries go. I'm Pastor Nate. This has been the Children's Sermon for this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.